This is Scott from Digital Fish with content that catches. A Kawa Island mission was on the cards this week as a screaming southeasterly closed out our other options. A bruising run out of the Sandspit estuary ended in calm waters on the western side of Kawa Island. Fishing with me today was Maori fishing legend and good mate Jody Waka. We found a good ledge with a lively current sweeping past and it didn't take long for the burly to work. Plenty of snapper were jumping on our baits and unusually this snapper thought it was a kawai and jumped while I was playing it. Before any rain appeared I took the drone for a fly to check out the area. In the distance I could see gannets congregating. I've always wanted to film working gannets with the drone so I flew it closer to the action for a look. We caught some piper and put out some live baits. I had a slow run, but looking at the damage on my piper, I think it was a snapper. The piper around the burly bag scattered just before Jody had a good run on his piper live bait. It was looking like a strong fish and I scrambled to clear the deck to give Jody some room, but sadly the hook pulled and the fish escaped. The tide was rising and so was the swell, so we pushed off and went to do some channel fishing. Burley is so important when bait fishing and salmon burley is one of my favorite types of burley because it has such a high oil content and is highly visible when released in the water. I like to use a collapsible burley pot because they are easy to stow away on small boats. I also like to store the pot in a bucket so the burley doesn't get all over the boat when moving between spots. One thing I learned about bait fishing, you can never have enough burley. I salvaged the burley bags from rock fishing and tied them on to produce more scent and attraction. I usually use 6 bar o suicide or beak hooks when stray lining the Haraki Gulf. I've tried a few different brands. These hooks are Tasman tackle hooks which have a good hook up rate. Fishing in about 8 meters of water I added a half ounce sinker to help get to the bottom in time. We moved about a bit and changed things up until we started to score. Sometimes takes a little while to get the boat, burly and bait in the fish zone. Jody scored a nice little eating snapper before my rod bent over. Judging by the short sharp tail beats and deep resistance I guessed I had a trevally on my line. Sure enough, a trevally swam around the burley line and was subsequently released. Kawa Island has a good fishery with plenty of shellfish beds. I don't know what this was but a snapper would eat it I'm sure. One of the baits we were fishing with was bullet tuna. Bullet tuna are a specialty bait from Top Catch. They are like a pilchard so you can cut them up like a pilchard into cubes, fillets or use them whole for big snapper. They have a higher oil content than pilchards though and while the flesh is soft, the skin and bone structure is noticeably firmer than a pilchard, so they last a bit longer on the hook. My favourite cut was a half section of tuna with the backbone still attached. I thought I had a little goldfish stealing my bait, but when I hooked up, the little goldfish stole lots of line instead. Jody told me he reckoned it was probably a stingray, but I think he was just jealous. Eight minutes later, a nice Kawa Island snapper came into view, and with a quick grab of the tail, he was in the bag. One of the things I noticed about the Tasman tackle hooks is that they have a long sharp point and a slightly close gape which I think helps hook the fish. What I noticed with burley is that the stronger the current the closer to the bottom you have to be. If it's too high in the water column the burley trail may diffuse too quickly before the fish can find your location. You also have to experiment with how far back to cast your line. I was fishing out the back but tried beside the burley bag when I hooked the biggest snapper for the day. We fished into the afternoon, a snapper would come past in the current every 5 minutes or so. I took a few moments to enjoy the afternoon sun before we finally fired up the motor and turned the boat for home. Despite some nasty 25 knot south easterly wind, we would found some good fishing in the lee of Kowow Island. This is Scott from Digital Fish with content that catches.